Right, so let's look at some questions regarding vapor pressure. So the first thing that we need to do is we're looking at this figure in my notes um, that I got from the textbook. And we're going to discuss how to interpret this kind of graph. So what it gives us is what the vapor pressure is of different substances at a given temperature. And of course, um, how we discussed it is um, basically the vapor pressure is what is the pressure of a gas, of the vapor, of a liquid in equilibrium with its, well, its liquid phase in a closed container at a given temperature. And then, as you know, as you slowly heat that container or that closed container, at some point, you will start to, well, all your liquid should be gas. And that is at a point where we're at 760 millimeter mercury or one atmosphere. And that is the so-called normal boiling point of a substance. Oh, this happens every time. So if you're at the normal boiling point of a substance, <clears throat> then that means you're at atmospheric pressure, or at least that is the point where the vapor pressure or the temperature at which the vapor pressure equals atmospheric pressure. So it's the temperature to which you heat this beaker, um, the temperature at which the pressure of the vapor in this beaker will be equal to that of the atmosphere. And of course, you can still heat the vapor onwards, and then the pressure will increase of the vapor. Okay. So let's look at the questions. What is the equilibrium vapor pressure of diethyl ether at room temperature, approximately 20 degrees Celsius? So diethyl ether is this red curve. And at 20 degrees Celsius, we can uh, draw the curve up here. And we just read off what the vapor pressure is. So this means in our closed container, <clears throat> so just to remind ourselves, what does this physically mean? Or well, to give us a picture, it means if we have a closed container and it contains some diethyl ether, then at 20 degrees Celsius, the gas phase of the diethyl ether will have a pressure of 400 millimeter mercury or 400 tall, or whatever. So that is the answer. The vapor pressure is going to be 400 millimeter mercury. Okay, so that's how you use the graph. Um, so let's continue from there on. Uh, place the three compounds in figure 12.2 in order of increasing intermolecular forces. And now the question is, what does increasing intermolecular force, so it probably refers to increasing um, intermolecular force strength mean and increasing intermolecular force strength will imply how much energy is required to make this substance undergo a phase change and importantly this graph tells us something about the boiling point <clears throat> so the boiling point is the point or the temperature at which we reach 760 millimeter mercury so we see the temperature for diethyl ether, if we follow that line, or this line up top here, if we follow this line, we see for diethyl ether, it is around about 37 degrees Celsius. For ethanol, it's like 78 degrees Celsius. And water, it's 100 degrees Celsius. Right, and the normal boiling points actually stand there top, but for you to read them off from the graph, <coughs> the graph, indicates that to you. So look at the boiling points, and then you should see, well, the diethyl ether should have the weakest intermolecular forces, which is followed by the ethanol, which is followed by the water. And that makes sense. Diethyl ether, um, is well it's an ether so it looks something like this these are ch3s ethanol ethanol so it looks something like that and water is oh2 so 
So on the left hand side, we have polarity, so it's dipole dipole forces and London dispersion. Ethanol has dipole dipole London dispersion and hydrogen bonding, and water has dipole dipole hydrogen bonding and London dispersion. But by far, with water's hydrogen bonding forces are the strongest compared to ethanol. So you can see how it increases in uh, intermolecular force strength. <coughs> Apologies. So C. If a pressure, if the pressure in a flask is 400 millimeter mercury, and if the temperature is 40 degrees Celsius, which of these three compounds are liquids and which are gases? So. Which ones are the liquids? Will be and which one will be gas? <clears throat> so, which are gases, which are liquids? So, the combination of things that we will be looking at is a vapor pressure of 400 millimeters mercury. So, we're looking at this line here. My goodness. And the temperature is 40 degrees Celsius. So. so that's what we're interested in. So um, 400 millimeter mercury um, and 40 degrees Celsius indicates, indicates um, to us a situation where our ethanol and our water, or yeah, ethanol and water should be liquids. Um, if you look at where they lie um, relative to the curves, so this dot, maybe just maybe I should just rub out all the stuff that's currently here to so just make it a bit visually easier to see. Well, okay, let's use this rather. So 40 degrees Celsius, 400 millimeter mercury. So there's 400 millimeter mercury, and there's 40 degrees Celsius. Question is, <clears throat> where are we with this? So at this point, what do we expect? What phase of a substance do we expect to have? Well, for the dying ether, ether case, we're to the right of the curve. And for the ethanol and the waters case, we're to the left of the curves. So in principle, we've already crossed the, the diethyl ether um, boiling point. So we are definitely above the boiling point, even though we are below the vapor pressure of the boiling point, but that's not relevant here. And it means that will be a gas and the liquids will be ethanol and water. So we have ethanol. And water. And the, ga oh, the gas is going to be gas. Why would it going to be the diethyl ether? Okay, question D. You heat some water to 60 degrees Celsius in a lightweight plastic bottle and seal the top very tightly so the gas cannot enter or leave the bottle. So what happens when the water cools? Well, <clears throat> um, if you think about, so what the plastic bottle does, the plastic bottle isn't a rigid thing. So if you heat a bottle to 60 degrees Celsius, we, um, we'll have a lot of water in the vapor phase. But as the bottle cools, the vapor phase is going to decrease. The water in the vapor phase is going to decrease. That decreases the vapor pressure, causing the total pressure or the atmospheric pressure to compress the bottle. So the bottle will collapse because the external pressure is larger than the internal pressure. And you should see a condensation of um, the water in the bottle. So 
uh, I'm not going to write the whole thing, but you can basically say as the water cools, the vapor pressure of the water decreases, resulting in the decrease of the total pressure in the bottle. Therefore, the bottle will collapse because the internal pressure, which is the vapor pressure of the water, is less than the external atmospheric pressure. <clears throat> and that's why your bottles clump or compress or collapse when you um, leave them in your car, for example, and, or you have a warm bottle and then you close it and then it cools down in the fridge or whatever, then you see them um, scrunch up. Okay, last question. A cylinder with a movable piston is partially filled with diethyl ether at a temperature of 30 degrees and a pressure of 400 millimeter mercury. What phases of diethyl ether exist under these conditions? The piston is pushed inwards, compressing the gas. After some time, the pressure stabilizes at 800 millimeter mercury. What phases of diethyl ether exist under these conditions? So, um, drawing a little picture, let's summarize our information like that. So here's our piston. Piston is at 30 degrees Celsius and 400 millimeter mercury. At 30 degrees Celsius, oh, where is that roundabout? There's... 30 degrees Celsius, 400 millimeter mercury. It's difficult to say exactly where that is because 30 degrees Celsius is just below this boiling point. It might actually lie on the line there. So it, I think it lies on the line. So if it lies on it, on this line here, so meaning in principle, we should actually get to a point where gets to the line, um, then you have a, a situation where you have liquid and vapor. Right. You have a combination of liquid and vapor phase. And as you then increase the pressure um, or the vapor pressure, if you increase the vapor pressure at the um, same temperature. In other words, in principle, you lift up, you suck up the piston, and you keep the temperature the same. You keep the temperature the same, but you move up to a higher vapor pressure, then you will move into the pure vapor phase. All right, so then you only have some vapor in the piston. Okay, so that's the main idea here. Um, you see these lines as a separation between liquid. On the line is a combination of liquid and gas, and to the right of it is pure gas or vapor. And you can use it to read off important information about liquid and gas. Okay. So that's the use of the graphs um, and other information. And of course, you can read off the boiling points of your um, compounds. Okay, uh, that's it for this example. Um, and as always, thank you for watching.